Hi everybody, welcome, 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 come on in. So if you're watch this, watching this on the replay, hi, this is a live video that's being shot on Saturday evening. Hope you've had a great Saturday. And as a bit of a celebration for my 4,000th video, oh no, what am I talking about? Not 4,000th video, my 4,000th subscriber. I wish I had 4,000 videos, oh my goodness. I think if I keep up the way I'm going though, I'll probably get there. But um, yeah, but I have got a few few videos, a few hundred videos now, which is kind of good fun. Anyway, um, the photo that I just put up was actually of this little tiny one here, but we're gonna make be making giant flowers today. So welcome, come on in. So uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, I have realized I've just had some really recent subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. It really means so much to me because it means that um, when you subscribe and you hit that bell button, you become part of this artful stamping community. Um, you know, hopefully you've become part of a movement of people that enjoys stamping, paper crafts, being creative, you know, and just having a good old time with it all. Now, I, the only downside to subscribing to my channel is that um, I do tend to like my flowers. And I'm afraid I'm unapologetic about that and I do tend to harp on about the florals. But um, I've been researching and planning and thinking and wanting to do something creative with even bigger flowers. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to share that with my, my YouTube community and friends and get spurred on by you guys because you're so fabulous okay I've made a little bit of a start but um I haven't quite finished it but I wanted to kind of show you how to make these giant flowers by being pretty frugal so I'm going to kind of explain from like some of the patterns that I've seen on YouTube and uh, the various techniques I've seen so far this is going to kind of be turned into a bit of a rose type flower I'm just going to turn my main light off so I don't get so much shadow okay that's a bit better isn't it so this is a sheet a 12 by 12 sheet of the Whisper White cardstock that Stampin' Up! do. And I like it because it's a slightly thinner weight than the other cardstock. Um, but I think it's going to work well for this. So, hi people that have come in on the live. Really nice to see you. Hi Jeannie, Jenny, Gloria and Sam. Lovely to see you. And here are my here is my template. Alright, so I'm going to kind of talk through it, how, what I'm doing and why. So the first thing to do is to actually fold this... Hold on. Make sure I get this right. Yeah. Fold the piece of 12 by 12 into half, but do it corner to corner. All right. And then, if you're brave enough and if you've got scissors that are sharp enough and you've got fingers that are strong enough, if you haven't, don't worry. Just do it. You don't have to do it. Fold it over. You can just leave it like that. But this is the way I'm going to show you how to do it, and then you can figure out the rest as needed. Then, grab a pencil and a ruler. And this is just for like, probably the first time that you do it. I mean, the second and third time you do it, you probably won't need a pencil, but this is just to give you the instructions so that you can then follow this at home. So this is the center part of the 12 by 12 and you're going to measure approximately one and a half inches away from that center and put a little mark okay on both sides so an inch and a half there and there then you're going to measure about let's have a look three inches in from the corners there and there all right and what you're going to be doing is creating a line between this point here and just kind of quite a thin one up by here and then curve it round to there and then do a random kind of loopy doopy thing here and then back round and then 
come back down to here. So this point is all going to be still attached, but we're just going to cut a little bit here and here. So the other thing you'll know about me, if you've been following me a little while, is that I'm quite frugal. I, um, I don't like waste, and so I kind of figured the least amount of card I can cut away from this, the better. I have seen pa other, pa there are other patterns that I am going to investigate, but they kind of need a bit of thinking to, and, and using, you know, you, you kind of, you end up cutting a big petal out, a big piece of a rectangle, and I just think, oh, I've got all that waste to use up for something else. So this is the pattern that I've come up with where I think actually we've got the least amount of waste. So I'm going to cut from this point here, and this is the point where I say that if you feel that your fingers are a bit are not strong enough to do this, that's fine. You can do it a slightly different way. So we're just going to curve around here like this, and then just cut a curve into here. So I'll just show you if if you wanted to do it where you just did it bit by bit, you would just literally keep that open like that, and then just do one side like that then you would fold it over and then you'd be able to cut the other side exactly by following the template there I hope that makes sense so yes it is a little bit stiff but it's not it's not insurmountable and I think if you were going to be making loads and loads of these perhaps you would use um, a, a slightly bigger pair of scissors you'd use like a chunkier pair of scissors hi Rhonda and hi Sue and hi um, lovely to see you guys. Thank you for joining me from West Virginia. Yay! Now, I was just going through some of my swaps from on stage, and the last few weeks I've been watching um, Christina Werner on her um, her channel, and she she's been using you know those rubbers that have got like the grain, the they're slightly grainy, so that if you get a bit of ink on your cardstock, you can use that just to get it off. And I was thinking, oh, I need to go and get myself one of these. And I was sorting through my swaps today, and I found this. Yay! So, um, I mean, obviously, I don't need to use it for now, because this is just pencil, so I'm using the white side for the, the pencil marks. But um, I was really pleased. I was like, I don't need to go and buy one of those. I've got one. Yay! Okay, I love it when that happens. So, look, that is all the wastage that we get from, from that, all right? Which I think is brilliant. Right, now the third thing that you guys might know about me is that I don't like to leave things plain. So I couldn't just go ahead and start making... That's it, a sand eraser, Jenny, yes. Uh, I couldn't just go ahead and just make my rose. So I've already started doing a little bit of inking and sponging. Okay, as you can see, this is one that I've started. But I still think this is a little bit too naked for me. <laughs> um... I want to do more. You know me, more is more. So I'm just going to grab another sponge. Um, I'm going to get some more yellow and some more pink because you know me, I need more. So um, where's my rich, oh no, I don't want rich razzle bow. What am I talking about? Lovely lipstick, I'm thinking. A really gorgeous pink on the edge. And um, what's that? Oh, maybe a bit of crushed curry. We'll go for that for now. So, um, hi Levine, lovely to see you. So, if you're watching this on the replay and thinking, why is Ruth saying hello to people? It's because um, when when this is, goes out live, you can comment. So, if you ever want to join me live and you want a notification of when I go live, then just remember to hit that bell button, and then you'll get a notification obviously you do need to check your YouTube settings because sometimes if you switch them off you won't get a notification but I think on phones and things you can get a little you know what's called a push notification and it just pops up on your screen you don't necessarily have to have a bell it all depends on this how you do the settings on your devices so I mean the great thing about doing lives on YouTube is that they get saved and you can come back in and watch them when you have time if you're not you know if you're not available so um I do love having the interaction it's lovely to chat to people and and so on so right I would like to grungy this up even further and I've got my beloved very Versailles here with me 
Now, I do know that this is probably going to go... Oh, actually, no, we won't put this one right in the middle. So we will see a little bit of this um, grungying. And I'm just going to just do a bit of stamping on the edge of this. I'm probably going to regret this, you know, by the time I try to do this. So maybe with some of the others I won't do so much. Okay, so that's that one done. I'm going to open up this one. This one needs a bit of yellow on here. Thank you, Jeannie. So out of interest, what other um, videos do you guys love watching on YouTube? Not necessarily craft related, but um, like since kind of YouTube's gone so popular you know me and my kids and my husband you know we end up just sitting and watching youtube channels because they're just such great fun you know it's not like the old days where you were kind of like you got your tv guide and you were like oh at four o'clock i'm going to watch you know postman pat and then at 4 30 i'm going to watch oh gosh you 80s kids you remember ulysses and things like that you'd be like oh yeah on wednesday afternoon it's dog tanyan or whatever it was um, but nowadays you can just go on YouTube and watch whatever you want, whenever you want. So, um, yeah, fourth and rising already. Oh my goodness. You guys are just so fabulous. Thank you. And thank you for sharing with your friends and please carry on sharing the love because, um, it really does help my business, um, with you guys sharing, sharing stuff out to folks. So, um, you know, do keep doing that. So I'm just grunging this up. And you know, look at me, I'm not even being that careful. <laughs> I just don't want naked petals. Makeup, fashion, slimming world YouTubers. Ah, okay. DIY stuff and home decor. Ooh, do you recommend any, are there any channels you guys recommend? I watch, um, there's a girl that does this amazing, like, she's like a woodworker. She she does, um, and she makes like tiny houses and stuff. I sometimes watch her videos. And what's great is you, if you like what she's made, you can go on her blog and she's got all the patterns for like benches and shelves and that kind of stuff. She's amazing. Um, home decor, that would be fun. Um... Okay. Oh, now the other thing I've got to show you is what's useful for this is like a piece of doweling rod. So anything like, or even like a wooden spoon from your kitchen if you haven't got a doweling rod. And so what you do is you turn it over and I'm just going to, oh, you, you, I bet you guys can't see me do that, can you? Let me just move some stuff out of the way. Is that you just roll up the card that and that just helps curl the paper Whoop. There we go. and it just helps break down those fibers so it makes it easier to when you're uh, constructing the flower later on it just helps it to be a bit more broken down so Kelly Barlow creates does decor from Dollar Tree stuff oh cool yeah, I, I, de decor from Dollar Tree stuff is quite popular, isn't it? But I'd really like to... I've, I've got a friend of mine who in where I live in my town who's really getting into trying to do zero waste stuff. And I think it'd be good to just look around your own home and go, right, what have I got that I can upcycle rather than buying more plastic and more stuff made in factories? Can you guys see where this is going? Look. Can you sort of see where it's going? Right, let's get this other one done. Oh, thank you, Karen. Gosh, all these subscribers are coming out the woodwork to say hello. It's lovely. I know you don't always have time to comment on videos. You know, I'm, you know, I end up watching a lot of videos and hardly ever commenting, but it really does mean a lot to me when you guys do comment. And um, I do try and at least like your comment, if not um, comment back, or if, certainly if you've got questions, um, I do try and answer those questions um, and if I don't reply immediately just you know 
try and message me again or if you follow me on Facebook as well if you go to Facebook and look at Artful Stamping then um, if you've got a, a specific question about anything that I make then I'm happy to try and answer um, I think I'm going to have to re-ink this pad at some point alright let's get some you know what, I think this is a makeup brush. This is actually isn't a stamping up one. It doesn't feel right. I'm gonna swap that out. I think this is a face painting one. It's ended up in my it's ended in my <laughs> ended up in my bag of sponges. Oh that's better. I wondered why it was kind of feeling weird. Hi Esther! I must try and make that resolution to what's that? Do you what do you mean? What's that, Esther? Didn't understand what you said then. Be right back, says Jenny. Oh, she's coming back. Okay. So we've got folks from Michigan, from the UK. Okay, so that one. Right, last one, guys. Yeah, it always helps if you make comments and if you like the video to to like it as thumbs up. And I don't know, you know, it's funny because um, I wonder if also thumbs down actually helps as well, if that makes sense. I'm not asking you to give me a thumbs down. Although if you do want to give me a thumbs down, it'd be nice to know why. Um, like if, if the video not to your taste or would you like me to do something different um, I'm happy to you know take criticism um, but yeah I, I remember watching a or I was discussing this actually with a, another YouTuber and, and we were saying actually is it does do thumbs down also give you the same attention if that makes sense or does YouTube go, oh dear, that video isn't liked, we don't want... Or actually, is it still attention? And you know, they say, oh, or, 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 not what they say? All publicity is, no, I say all publicity is good publicity, or even bad publicity is, <laughs> does that make sense? Yes, absolutely, it counts as engagement. Thank you, Jenny, that's the words I wanted. I was trying to find the, what I was trying to say. Yeah, people, are, you know, I have wondered about doing a bad taste video, or not bad taste, but what not to do when making cards and try and get as many thumbs down as possible for it. I think that would be quite fun. You know, in, in a way to show how good the video was. <laughs> You're a Londoner living in Paris and you love vintage and flower. Hey, Sue, you have come to the right place. I hope you like messy as well, because look, <laughs> I get very messy and I don't want to show you my desk. I'm literally working in this space here. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to have to put a little bit of ink just onto this as well, in case this shows on the other side. Roberto Blake does a channel about how he t how YouTube works. Yeah, I've been watching a little bit more about how your videos get seen and how um, you end up on recommended. Like, so if you're watching this video and there's like all those little videos to the side of it, how do I make sure my videos show up on like other popular videos suggestions? So, um, and it is so weird because I look back on some of my videos and go, oh, that's only had like 
a hundred views, whereas some have got a thousand. It's like, what is it that about that video that suddenly, you know, made it more popular or, you know, like my recent Daisy video, you know, people have just gone crazy over it. But it was interesting to notice that it that when I pinned it on Pinterest, um, it's one of my most pinned, most recently pinned and highest pinned cards. Um, and then when I looked at where the traffic was coming from for that YouTube video, it was coming from Pinterest. So it's inter it is, it's fascinating, isn't it? I, it becomes a little bit of a, it almost becomes like a bit of a game really to try and figure out how, to, how it will work. Katie says, I love doing tapestries. That was my first craft and making cards. So I do both now as a hobby. Ooh, so what sort of tapestries do you like doing, Katie? Yes, yeah, I do a lot. Of, I do make sure I tag lots of different words in my um, my thing. Okay, so I'm ready to start constructing. So I'm going to go with the first one that I did because that's probably the most curled one. Okay, so this is from what I've seen. Oh, I nearly said this is what I've seen on the telly. Uh, this is what I've seen on YouTube how people have done it. So you take the first one. And you curl it quite tight and I've got my hot glue gun here at the ready it's been warming up for me and I'm gonna put some glue there I'm gonna glue that together <gasps> this is so exciting I've never done one of these before so this is really exciting to share this with you guys and then you take the second one but you don't do it as tight you kind of just do it so that it um, Kind of surrounds it. Oh, it's a bit lopsided, but oh well, it will work out, I'm sure. Then you take the side one, well, side one, you know what I mean, the other one, and you put that round, but again, not so, not too tight. I guess it all depends what type of rose you want to create. By the way, we're making a rose. <laughs> I should have said that from the beginning, really. <laughs> right, and then look, see how that one, look, it's like the little hands are going round. Is it like giving you a little hug? Look, look, look just a little hug like that. Oh, hands don't quite meet. Sorry, I'm being a little bit silly now. There we go. That's what it reminds me of. Where's that? Is that from a film? Oh, hug, hands don't quite meet. That, it just seems to ring a bell with me. Oh, I've got hot glue on my ink pad. Right. Right, so that's the first one. Um, then, so you've got your, oop, you've got this kind of like square base here now. And I think... Now, do I do that square on square? Ouch. I've got a feeling that that probably doesn't, wouldn't be right in nature. It, that doesn't happen like that. I think it should be that way, where it's, the square goes on like that. So you know what? I'm going to do it that way because it just feels right. It does, yeah? So there's my square there. I'm going to just put some hot glue on there. Hi Linda, nice to see you. And I'm aiming my square so that the corners go like that. Offset would be better. Thank you, Jenny. I can always rely on Jenny to back me up. Thanks. Okay, so that's on. So now we're going to give a little hug to this one. And hands don't quite meet, but that is fine. Let's see how that's look not quite meeting but that's good so we can just pop a bit of glue onto there and a bit of glue onto there and bring this to there thank you Linda Oops. 
Uh, now the only thing about having it offset like that is that we've got this little pointy bit here but I think that's not a bad thing just got to work with it okay so a little bit of glue on that bit a little bit of glue on that bit okay I think this is working <laughs> Jenny says, well, I'm usually right. <laughs> As in, me, I'm usually right. <laughs> okay, how's, how's that looking, guys? Do you think that's looking like a rose? Want round to here. So remember, you can always watch these videos sped up if you find this a little bit tedious now, or you can skip ahead. I don't mind if you want to do that. Right now, I'm wondering whether I can do it again that way or. We'll do one that's kind of fairly loose but I might put some colour on the inside and then the last one or we do it that way actually bring me bring these up to kind of meet it I'm not sure I might do another I might do another round of petals, but if I don't think it looks right. All right, what's the last one I did? It's that one. Okay, so. um, maybe if we just stuck those like that. Actually, this time we go round like that and do it like that. Where will I be putting it? Good question, Karen. <laughs> I haven't decided. I just know I want to make loads. I, I, um, yeah, I would love to do an all-day workshop on this. So you guys are actually helping me by keeping me company to kind of go, yeah, that looks good, that doesn't look good. Um, because I would really like to develop a series of videos on this, doing lots of different flowers. And... Um, and for, for my local people, I'd love to do a day um, on this type of thing. So there's a friend of mine, she has a art studio in town and she runs workshops there. And I'd love to do, I was talking to her today about it and I'd really like to do a workshop at her place. So um, obviously because I sell Stampin' Up! products and that's the my, main focus of my YouTube channel, then I would always use Stampin' Up! products on here but there's no reason why you have to if you've got lots of other card and paper then um you know go for it you don't have to use what i use you know it's more about the technique you could try pressing the corners of the base to round it a bit it might help oh that's a good idea yeah um i'm just gonna i'm just coloring the edges of this because this can be seen a little bit so, now this is the only downside to colouring your own paper, obviously, but you just have to, this just adds extra time, but I think it's kind of worth it 
Um, a lot of the flowers I tend to see, I've joined several paper flower making groups on Facebook and rarely do I see flowers made um, that are patterned. So I thought, ooh, there's a niche in the market, a niche in the market to do this. Right, so, yeah, you're right. We could, it is paper, remember that. It, you know, you don't have to, you know, be prissy with it. If you have to do a bit of, be a bit rough with it, it's okay. This is all going to get covered up, so. Right, let's have a look. So I think, um, let's go, I'm going to stick that onto there and go for it. New glue stick. It would help if I stood over it, wouldn't it? There we go. Okay, I'm thinking of bringing up these one by one so that the petals kind of Yeah, I'm going to try doing that. You do realize guys, I'm experimenting in front of you that this is not a done deal. <laughs> is one big experiment oh I don't need to hold that for longer okay so with hot glue remember to hold it onto it for a little bit actually I really like having this this petal hanging a little bit more because it makes it flow a bit more it makes it look a little bit more <laughs> realistic for a paper flower that is stamped with vintage script <laughs> so so this last one here that one tucks into here. I've done many tapestries of the Lion King, says Katie. Winnie the Pooh, Lady in the Tramp. Oh, they were sold. Uh, okay, maybe a tennis ball to round the bottom next time before assembly. Yeah, really good idea, Jenny. Okay, so this one I'm tucking in here. So we get this lovely curled effect right so see I like the way that this is just curling up and I, I think just gluing that to there and that to there it just gives it a really lovely organic kind of flow right so off so this one I'm going to st stick on offset so this naturally when it comes up to here just looks so pretty but before I do that I am going to colour this I think I might just need a little bit more crushed curry ink on here because I'm using it up um regals. I'm going to have to order some more reinka. Ooh, <laughs> that's a bit more vibrant, isn't it? Okay, the reason I went for kind of yellows and pinks is because um, as a child I used to, and it's a very pop, there's a very popular rose in the UK called the, I think it's called the Peace Rose, and it's got yellow, a yellow centre with pink tinged edges, and it's just, I love it, it's so, such a beautiful kind of rose. 
but I invariably whenever I sort of start doing anything that's to do with roses I end up just doing yellow and pink <laughs> although obviously there are lots of other colours that you can play with right so this is actually starting to round off really nicely I don't, I don't know if you can kind of see that if that's coming across but it is so it kind of is naturally happening okay so I'm going to try and do that slightly offset Ooh, she says Ooh, too late now it's on <laughs> Tuck a few of the bottom ones into the ones that are glued down, maybe. Oh, it looks a bit pinwheelish. Oh, I got you. So, you mean these ones? Well, I was going to glue these up here. Or. I'm wondering whether we do. I do have to stick these down. Yeah, very. I'm, I'm kind of just letting the paper do its thing and I'm kind of just sticking it where the paper wants to go. So I, I'm wondering whether to do another layer of this. I'm just going to pull these up. And then do another layer underneath. Take the bit that's on the bottom and pull it up and bring the loose bit on the base around to lock it in place. The loose bit on the base. I'm wondering just, yeah, if I just bring all this up now and stick these up and then make another layer to go on the bottom. Sorry if I'm not quite getting you, Jenny. Just, just to sort of see how it feels because I'm not I'm not doing the, exactly the same on each petal now it's kind of just feeling my way and going with where the what the petal wants to do which I think is probably a good thing so that it's not exactly the same all the way around I want to hide this bit of ink that I've done so I'm going to do that Yeah, Karen. <laughs> or you guys can go and do your own videos. <laughs> go on, go and do what I've done and then and then do it how you'd like to do it. <laughs> Linda says, yeah, another layer. So that is good. now we're going to do another layer 
actually, you know what I'm very tempted to do is uh, is to not have it on the base. I'm going to cut it, but I'm going to cut it all the way through this time so that the petals can be stuck further apart. Yeah, if you watch it on the replay, just watch fast forward, um, watch it on speed, speed forward. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever do that. You can watch me at 1.5 speed so that it doesn't take up so much of your day. Take care, Gloria. Good day. Thank you for watching. Yeah, that's yes, Jenny. I agree. It's it is like yeah, weaving them are kind of interweaving them. But then also remember, I think in in life, you know, once they've been blown around in the garden a bit, they're not always as perfect, are they? So I'm not I'm not striving for like a perfection and I think that's maybe the one criticism I have of some of the paper flowers that I see being created they they're very kind of perfect um and and there is a wonderful kind of emphasis that I have seen in the paper flower making community of um striving to get balance and the right contrast of textures and all that kind of thing um but I've not I, I, if I think I'd like to experiment with a bit more imperfection, if that makes sense. Because they're not being really viewed too close up, so... Usually these things are like parts of big backdrops or on a wall or, you know. There's some amazing ones, sets of flowers that you can purchase on Etsy to put on your wall. The only thing is, that as a crafter, I'm look, I look at them and go, hmm, I can do that. <laughs> Us crafters are terrible. We look at things and just go, oh yeah, we take it apart. We could do that. <laughs> so... If you strive for imperfection, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's right. We're not striving for perfection. We're, we're striving for enjoyment and creativity and beauty. And I think, obviously, there are some people who love the beauty of perfection. But actually, I think most things that we would consider beautiful are, aren't perfect. Right, dowling rod. So, I hope you, do you guys understand me? Because I've got these separate ones now. We don't need to have them stuck right. We can make these a bit bigger. So I think I'm just going to curl. Actually, I might have some of this curled that way. Yeah, that's right, Jenny. It's the touches of imperfection that makes it look more real and natural. Yeah. So if you're going to make hundreds of these, <laughs> Um, you might want to invest in a spray paint or something. <laughs> so 
might take a while to colour all these. About this bit. So how's the weather been with you guys today? Um, we've had such hot weather here in the UK and then it's suddenly gone cold again. Right. This time I'm just going to put glue there and have it sticking a little bit away from the middle. Oh, no, that can go further. Oh, that would look nice, yeah. You know what? I think we need more petals. <laughs> oh dear. Because we've got gaps now. Well, it feels like there's going to be gaps. I guess if I stick these up, they won't be. Um, if I just bring these together, you know what, I'm just going to bring these together. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to stick the lower petals to this one. I'm just going to stick these together. because that is just helping to curl it up a little bit. I'm not going to meet. Right. I think I'm done. I don't know whether just to put a little bit more pink inside here. So a little tip, if you've got you've had your stamp out and there's ink all over it, then use it up. Put it onto your sponge so that you can then use that. I might just try and pull my camera away a little bit further so you guys can see it a bit more. I'm just going to take off the stand. So. Oop, excuse me. Okay. 
So, so there we go. Giant rose. Ruth's style. That's a keeper, she says. It's a keeper. And I'm sorry it's not daytime, but I'll I'll take some nicer photos of it tomorrow. Okay, so you can see the sides where I haven't put the pink. Um, so bear that in mind that if you if you would prefer to see the stamping on there, that you might want to do do the stamping on both sides before you stick it together. But then at the same time, the contrast is quite nice. So. Um, I'm just going to pop a little bit more pink in this section here on the edges. <laughs> just need five more, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to start experimenting with a different flower now for you guys so that. Um, We'll end up with a lovely collection. So keep sharing my videos. I, I, I was going to maybe say, right, we'll get 400 more subscribers and I'll do, <laughs> do another flower, big giant flower one. Because uh, it will take me a few weeks to kind of, or at least a few days to th think of a new project. So, um, yeah. Right, well, so thank you so much for joining me, guys. Obviously, this is not exhaustive. If you... Um, you know have a go doing this and think oh I just want to change it up a bit just go for it I mean I just wanted to have an experiment with the principles of the, that, that especially that beginning structure of having those petals that you fold in and then you keep folding and folding them in um, but there are lots of other ways to do this uh, but I was kind of inspired by trying to not waste cardstock as well so um, there we go you do get very inky, by the way, get very messy, but that's that's half the fun. So. Right, guys, have a lovely weekend, and um, I'll hopefully see you back here soon for, I don't know, I don't know what my next video is, I need to, actually I think I've got one film that needs editing, so, but we'll see you soon. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. Yeah, please do do share. It was it, I had a lovely comment from a fellow demo who I really admire. Actually, she's a, one of the top demos in the UK, and she said, "How can I just? I've just found your your channel." I was like, "Oh." So um, there's obviously lots of people that don't know my channel, and so uh, please do share it out and share the love, share the creativity, love. It's a really nice creative community on YouTube. Um, so we try to be drama free on this channel. <laughs> so. Right, take care, have a lovely, lovely weekend and thank you so much for joining me. Bye.